the most intense solar storm in decades could cause quite the aurora borealis display across the country tonight in areas that aren't normally able to see the dazzling display of the northern lights. Now with more on what to expect and why this is happening, let's bring in our meteorologist, Ross Hall. Hi, Ross. Hi there, Miranda. All right, so this is being called a severe geomagnetic storm. What exactly does that mean? Yeah, well, it all starts at the sun and uh, the corona, so the surface or the atmosphere of the sun. There are these eruptions that happen. They're massive eruptions, uh, some of them 16 times the diameter of the Earth. And those eruptions, uh, well, there are solar winds that make their way towards the Earth millions of kilometers away, and they can affect the Earth's magnetic field, and that's why we see the northern lights. So let's go over some of the key impacts or key effects of this geomagnetic storm watch that's in place. Uh, these, these eruptions are called coronal mass ejections, CME for short. It's a solar material that's erupting on the sun. And this is the highest level watch we've had since 2005. So it's been quite some time. And that means, among other things, that the aurora may be visible much farther south than is usual. So across Canada, even as far south as Northern California. So let's take a look at what these eruptions look like. Uh, this is, uh, we've been observing these eruptions over the last couple of days, and there are several strong flares that have been observed. And these clusters, as I mentioned, are massive. And basically, uh, these particles from these clusters travel millions of kilometers away at a very high speed, about 45 million kilometers per hour. And they do interact with the magnetic field of the Earth. And that's what causes um, these, the aurora borealis or the northern lights. It's just very far away. So we have a lot of trouble predicting sometimes our weather conditions in our atmosphere. At this point, we are predicting uh, what's going to happen on, sun's, uh, on the sun's atmosphere, or at least the sun's surface, and how it's going to make its way towards the Earth. So that's why there are still some questions, but we expect those coronal mass ejections to start impacting the Earth at some point today into the weekend. All right, Ross, I have never seen the Northern Lights. I've always wanted to. I have to know which parts of the country will be lucky enough to experience them tonight. Okay, well, let me show you a map, and this will give you some clarity on that, Miranda. This is according to the uh, NOAA's, uh, in the U.S., their Space Weather Prediction Center, and this is the view line, this red line here, and you can see it traveling all the way south into the U.S., uh, encompassing much of our country as well. Now, there will be some factors, obviously, cloud cover and also light pollution from the cities, but this is... If this happens, if this forecast does come through, uh, this would be one of the best viewing opportunities uh, far south into Canada and the U.S. that we've had in quite some time. Amazing. Now, of course, as you just mentioned there, the weather has to cooperate for ideal viewing. So how is the cloud cover looking? Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the cloud cover in a moment. I also wanted to mention as well uh, about the negative impacts that this could have, Miranda, on the power grid because it is a beautiful display and we've got some beautiful displays here of the Aurora Borealis. You can see that. This is what you could see if you've got the right photography lens as well. Uh, however, uh, these strong magnetic storms can have an impact on the power grid. That's what happened back in 2003. Uh, there were power outages when there was one of these strong storms that happened in Sweden and that also happened uh, to some damage some power transformers in South Africa. So that is something we will have to look out for uh, when it comes to the dangers of this, besides the brilliance of what you see in terms of uh, the northern lights. And in terms of the cloud cover that you mentioned, Miranda, it's looking pretty good across the west. So through BC, across Saskatchewan, as we head through the overnight into tomorrow morning, some cloud cover over northern Ontario, at times through southern Ontario, though I think there will be some breaks. Same situation across the maritime. So a couple of factors. Of course, you need those clear skies, get away from any light pollution. Look to the northern sky as well. That's important because a lot of the activity is happening to, towards the north. And of course, we need the, this, this, uh, this magnetic activity to start happening at the right time as well. So a lot of factors, but it could be a brilliant display uh, tonight, Miranda, into early Saturday morning. All right, first a total solar eclipse, now this solar storm. How exciting. Ross, thank you so much. You're welcome. For the update. All right, that is our Ross Hall joining us from the Weather Studio.